Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Watch Frieren. Today we're on episode 11. It's called Winter in the Northern Lens. And so we finally go north into the cold, probably. Um, yes, yeah, so Aura is done with, uh, is being, uh, has been dealt with. Loved that, that episode so much last time. The Flammer stuff was beyond beautiful and sad and uh, wholesome. So let's see where we go today. Probably a new story arc, I would assume. Or perhaps half the episode closing the last one off and then a next story arc. Can't wait for this. Can't wait what we will uh, see on this journey. And um, nothing more to say then. Uh, let's go. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And uh, yeah, consider joining Patreon if you want these earlier. But uh, let's just go have some fun with Frieren and dive into the north. Doch ich frag, ich frag mich. So where is Frieren walking here? Oh, it's yeah. Sun is rising after Aura's defeat. Morning is broken. I think you say it like that. And she prays. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's probably because Haida prayed, I think. Let's see if she honors Aura in some way and has changed, like, if she hates demons still. But yeah, the holy music, I love this. Let's see why she does it. Or she perhaps prays for the fallen. Yeah, she prays for the fallen, not for Aura. Of course, she doesn't pray for them. Uh, for her. Where's her corpse? They probably censored that. Yeah, Granat is there as well. How many are there left? Two are dead of the seven demon kings. Things. What are they called? Whatever, you know what, like, the, the, the big guys here is. Or girls. <laughs> I like that they use Graf as well, the Graf. Um... So it's like count, I think. Or Earl? I always get that a bit mixed up, but it's like something like Earl or Count, like. Not really. <laughs> oh, that's why she dispelled them. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I bet he did, yeah. <laughs> but it's true though, he trained her as well with, with his way of life. This is a normal reaction, what does she mean with that? Yeah. Oh, it's so cool that she says that. Yeah, she tested them a bit. <laughs> Look how, how beaten down Star Stark is. <laughs> it's just like, I need medicine. <laughs> no, he's not like that, but. Uh... Yeah, Barils. Your son, yes. Oh, What will he think? Well, I, I need more. I need the backstory about his son and him. Man, I need that. He knew. Oh, Released his son from hell, so to speak. And the cat again? Might have been just a reused shot. Oh, is she getting a grimoire now? Oh, she wants that. What is with the grimoire? It's fake. Okay. Yeah, they're all fake. <laughs> because it's from Flamme, they're all fake. Because I don't think you can learn Flamme's magic from a grimoire. I don't think you can. You can't. That's the point. She will have a different kind of magic, so to speak. I love that. It's hinted at very well with the fake grimoire stuff. But I, I think I got that now. I think I know why it is. I'm sorry for teasing. Like, I, I, like I don't do it to poke, poke at people. I'm just so happy that I saw some stuff that's like very, in, very integral uh, in intricately woven into the story here with this some little details that are very very nicely done 
Yeah, that's true though. Really, he did. <laughs> they were. <laughs> I can't see them doing that though. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I mean, it's the king. Oh, yeah, that was also, yeah. What is the king called? König? Probably not. König Licht. That's so dumb. Ah, I like that. He wanted to save him because he reminded him of his son, yeah. I need more about Granada and his son. That's so intriguing. Because I Granada's. Like, we we have spent some time with him, like three episodes or two. Didn't really get to know him. And I feel that character is very intriguing. Someone, I think, commented and asked me somewhere in some reaction who my favorite side character might become. Granat is up there, at least. He's one of the best, I think. I need more of Granat. Yeah, Stark has died inside, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, she has to offer him out. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> oh no, will there be a goodbye again? Oh no, she will hate that. She's gonna sneak out or something. Oh no, he's uh, she's not. At the least, she isn't. What will he say? The name that has protected me. I will probably have to mute this. Being called by that soothing voice of yours. So that you won't close your eyes all alone. And time passes, I'll embrace you. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, it's so cool. And Stark with the children again. It's so cool. So I won't forget. Oh, I love this. I love the 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 Northern Lights style magic here. It's so beautiful. I have a real fable for Northern Lights. I love them. I want to see them one day. Beyond the night where it's full of flowers is where you are, a place I will return to. Split the swelling, unravel the darkness. Yeah, they honor their dead. So that the dream remains uncorrupted to the blue path that never ends. That was definitely Frieren thinking about Himmel and Flamme. I think she was uh, thinking about Himmel though. I think that was her talking about Himmel. Um, normally I like when I do um, a sound uh, like, or, or music or opening or ending like I only did it twice in Attack on Titan though. When I do the reactions, I first listen to the song, then listen to the visuals, then look at the lyrics and really dig into them. I will not do that here, I think, because it would really derail it, I feel, somehow. But um, it was definitely about Himmel, like the, the, the blue path, like blue, sky blue, um, like this warmth that she feels when, because she always remembers him like this warm guy, um, the flowers, of course. Um, uh, that are at his grave or at his statue. Not his grave, at his statue. I don't remember, did she cast flowers around his grave? I don't think she did. I have to go back and look it up, perhaps. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the night is over. And um, yeah, th so the night is over um, and our dreams are there. So the dream is seeing him again, I guess. Now, like, they have a goal again. Or she has a goal. I, I love that. Probably there is more in the song. Um, I'm sorry that, like, if, if you want me to, I can uh, deal with the song in an extra video, perhaps a small one. But yeah, let's just go. Also, I like that they were, like, healed and stuff and time passed a bit. So no parade here. 
Really, I guess the other demon lords have uh, returned. Oh, they're in luck. They are they are accompanied by an SSS plus plus tier mage. Oh no, she does not have that. She can't tell me she has that because she trained alone and she doesn't want people to know her and stuff. She doesn't care. So she does not have that. Oh, are they are they gonna do an exam arc where she's just gonna own everyone? That would be so dumb. And she might learn new stuff. Oh, she does have one. Interesting. She's third class mage. <laughs> An uncertified underground mage. <laughs> that is true. Like she, or like, that's also a very interesting point. Like if she gets a certificate, like in a hundred years, she needs a new one because the people like changed and bureaucracy probably has grown. Like it does all the time. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But what is it? So when did she get hers? <laughs> okay. But why? Like, she can just be like, hey, see that mountain? Here, I nuked it. Like, I know she won't do that. She won't, like, tell everyone how powerful she is. Because of what we learned in the last episodes, I know. Just a joke, but... <laughs> It's funny, it's realistic as well. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's like something I always think about in these time travel things. Like, um, like why would they care if you say, yeah, I'm free and like, or free, like, why? Why would they care? They probably won't believe you. And even if they believe you, like, they are still bureaucracy. So, like, why would, like, like I don't think people will really change their behavior, even if, like, the legend itself stood before them. They probably would not believe it. And then they were like, nope, you can't be here. I guess that's very realistic. I like that I've never seen that really done before. It's a problem that coming up is very logical, but I've never seen it really come up before. Like, you would say here, it's like, it's a, um, what do you say? Um... In German, you would say Chicana. I don't know what it means in English, but um, it will probably be somewhere on the screen what it means in English. But yeah, so anyway, let's go. Exam time. Oysast, so the outermost city. Probably the most northern city there is. Yeah, see. Granat. Oysast, yeah, there is Oysast. I wonder where Tyr is. Someone told me Tyr is the entrance to the Northern Lands, which is door. Tyr means door. But, but they're almost there then. Like, there is Oasis and like, I don't know, like this, this distance again. Like, if they travel this distance and travel it again, they're at the end. Of, if I read the map correctly. I might misremember though. Are you sure though? That's like, I know it's stupid nitpicking, but time will come and you will forget. But I, yeah, she will probably be remembered for a long time. I don't know how long, but yeah. What is that in the distance? There was a weird hill. Ooh, snow. Oh, the cold, wow. And no sun there. Ha <laughs> bye. Poor Stark. Can't they just fly? Can't they build a little igloo and then, you know, oh, oh okay. Ha <laughs> okay. 28 years after the death of Himmel the hero in the Decker region, Located in the northern lands. Decker means a uh, ceiling, uh, but it can also mean uh, you call uh, the layer of snow that's on the ground, you also call it a uh, uh, snow decker. So it's Schnee decker, snow decker. So uh, fits the thing. Again, I mean, of course it does, but. The Schwer Mountains. Schwer means difficult or hard. Like it can be, or heavy. Like it can be heavy. Like, is in weight as heavy or schwer in the difficulty? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, he thinks back to his uh, his meal where he uh, remembered Eisen. I think probably not not important though. That might be really over. That's really overreaching. I'm sorry. That's overreaching. Ha! <laughs> Stark being blown away would be so funny. Can't you create like a sled? So the magic works in reducing your density so you can float. Interesting detail. <laughs> oh no, it might be. Oh, there's the emergency shelter. Yeah, man, snowstorms can be so terribly dangerous. Yes, someone's inside. And they might be training. Oh, who are you, you jolly fellow? Oh, it's an elf. That's cool. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> Why? Because he was naked? I mean, he was doing his best. <laughs> oh, he's got a... He's got a, a bird as a necklace. I wonder why. I mean, yes. Didn't you see his ears? Wow, yeah, he must be old as well. Wow. He thought the elves had died out and he's so nonchalant about that. That's so sad as well. I wonder how he coped with the passage of time. And I wonder if they will talk about that. I wonder how what he's called. So he's not a mage. Yeah, schwer mounts because it's hard to pass them, I guess. <laughs> I'm craft the monk. Uh, craft is a very complex term. Um, there are many meanings to that. Here it would be um, something like a spiritual power, perhaps. Um, like uh, there is like a, a, a will. Like the like we had villa um forest or something I think or villa region that villa villa like the will to do something uh, 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 if you have it it's villain's craft like there's craft there uh, or it means force like in physics it means force um, it is also uh, uh, like life life force something like that I would associate with it here. Uh, because he's a monk, so life force would probably be why he's called Kraft. But it's also bodily strength, so he's got a similar name like uh, to Stark. Uh, uh, like, if you have Kraft, you are Stark. Like, it's very closely connected, so he might be a warrior. Monk, <laughs> a warrior monk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, uh, and spiritual power as well. Like, spiritual power, like that power is also Kraft. So, like, Kraft is like... <laughs> Giant, giant word. Very, like, yeah. Ooh, let's go, Aureola. To heaven, yeah. So she doesn't really believe in Aureola. Interesting. Does he know something about Aureola as well? Because if that's heaven, there have to be more cults. Because currently, my impression was something like this. Aureola is something Flamme visited. And she was probably the only one that ever visited it, I think. At least in, like, that's, like, recorded in history and some character in this story. Like, perhaps people have visited before, but, you know, so I think Flamme was the only one. And I thought that the grimoire Flamme left behind was the only thing that... Like, that was the thing that made her think, oh, Aureola might be something that's real. And perhaps Flamme told about it. Uh, or talked about it. But this monk knowing that Aureola is heaven is implies to me that at least there are perhaps some religions or spiritual people who know about Aureola. Because he just said it. Or it might be something the elves had believed in. But someone also said that belief is had been created with humans, not elves and dwarves. Because we know that um, Eisen as well, he does believe in nothingness after death. 
So heaven is something human created. Oh. Oh. It might have been that uh, the story of Aureole that Flamme told was from Flamme, and Flamme inflamed the belief in, in heaven. I know it sounded like Heiter was just like, they just believe in it, but someone must have started it. I don't think it's... Um, Perhaps those two were in parallel. Perhaps the, there were monks that thought, yeah, heaven would be cool and convenient, or whatever he said. That was an awesome line. I'm sorry, I probably butchered it right now. So that might be a notion. And then um, Flamme comes around and goes like, yeah, if I've been to Aureole, I could, I could speak to the souls of the dead there. And uh, they were all like, oh, wow, it really exists. And it gave more like, it also inflamed, like Flamme, like, and you, you can inflame belief, so to speak. I don't know if that's a saying in English, but in German you say you inflame belief. Like that would be a German slang. You believe your spirituality is inflamed and, and, and it's burning now. So that's also why Flamme would fit. I don't know though. Like that might just be a coincidence. Oh, is he really having a problem? Where is he now? Oh no, where is he? No. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps he thinks of something to keep going, like something he loves to keep going. Ah, <laughs> it's so funny. What a nice dude. Kraft, you're awesome. Friend of mine has uh, uh, is uh, called, like, his show name is Kraft. His fam uh, his fa I'm not, I always confuse if show name is the first or second name you have. The family name of my friend is Kraft. He's called Kraft. <laughs> so I know a person called Kraft, so it's not that far off, actually. <laughs> Shoutouts to you if you ever watch these. You're such an awesome guy. I mean, they had to warm him. Why does he not have something on top of his body? I know it's a plate for laughter and stuff, but it's cold. Why? Like, and he's doing squats. I know you get sweaty, but perhaps he doesn't want to get do that, but... He's not training anymore. Why is he not putting something on? Perhaps he lost it. <laughs> yeah, he probably trained a lot. Yeah, he's got a lot of cuffed. He's strong. <laughs> yeah, he's also similarly dressed as like like um Haita was. So and Haita was a priest, so. What is the, like, I know the distinction in our world, but it's also this different kind of belief. Oh, yes, does she? So they are from different parts of the world, perhaps. Oh, yeah, before that. Why did it cut away? Why didn't she tell him? Please talk to this dude. Oh, that's so cool he trains him. <laughs> Why is she so silent? Oh, those things are beautiful. No, 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 no. No, okay. Oof. I thought, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so they stayed with him for a while. But didn't Frieren talk to him? Yeah, that's interesting. He was like, okay, you are Frieren the hero, but what were you before? He didn't know her because she was a very close of person, I guess. Oh, so they made it. That's cool. Oh, It gives them craft. That's cool. Yeah, like giving strength to someone. Like That's why I said that. Oh, he believes in the goddess as well. You should, Frieren. Like, not really, but... Okay, so they believe in the goddess of creation. Goddesses of creation are most... Like, like that's a very natural thing. Like, the creation go go god thing... I don't know the neutral term. is mostly a woman because it stands for nature birthing everything. Nature is very often female because obviously women birth children. So, I mean, but uh, it's cool. I like that. I always like a female uh, creation goddess. That's a very nice trope. 
Wow, he says you're young. What made you believe? Why does he need her to exist? Your righteous triumphs. Oh, he's lost everyone. And he doesn't look for companions. He probably has. Because they would also turn into stories in his mind, I guess, and he can't. Like, one day he will die, and then at least someone will there f be there forever with him. Like, he has got similar problems, like Frieren. Why does he not go to Aureola? I mean, yes, the goddess is not there, but couldn't he at least talk to the past ones? But I think he wants to be remembered in the future. He's like more of a triumphant man and not like. Yeah, that would be convenient. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Because it conflicts as well with what Flammer says with don't put your name in history before you kill a demon king. She now did, but I also perhaps think she didn't. I will talk about that more in another time, but yeah, it's like, does, does Frieren want to be remembered? I think what, what Frieren wants to be remembered, if I would guess, is like in the end, perhaps one day, is her actions. And who she perhaps became after this journey, I would feel that would fit. Wow, that must be so long, yeah. Yeah, and the dead thing there. Yeah, the dead bunny. So I guess someone killed it, and they look at it while it, like it's dead, and they are like, I don't understand that really. We try just to deal with that. <laughs> That's such a cool counter. Does it apply to Aureola as well? Yeah. Does she believe in it only? Will there be no Aureola in the end? Will it be the French we made along the way? You know, that might be. Don't know. But Jesus Christ, that would be... I don't know. Would you be content with that? I don't know if I would be, actually. I Like, I don't know. Probably not actually, but I, I'd still love the trope. Because because this story is so interestingly and intricately and beautifully written that I don't think that trope would really fit it, like the brilliance of the story. It wouldn't, I think. But I, I don't know, what do you think? What did she say? Aww. <laughs> Why not? Haito's pretty nice. <laughs> Oh, Haita was. Oh, so sh one of the other reasons probably he connected with Fanworth. Oh, no. Oh, he thought the same. That's so cool. How do their beliefs differ then, priests and monks? Yeah. No one. Oh, oh no. If he oh if she meets him in Aureole, he will praise her. That might be like I hope if we ever get to Aureole and and she's there and sees him, if that's a thing. Which I hope it will be. Like, I hope it's not friends made along the way. Because I want something like this. I want him to see her and praise her. Something like that. That they what be that would be one of the awesome things. But I guess he's right. Everyone wants to be praised in the end. Like, why not? Like, if it doesn't cost anything, like because sometimes praise costs something. And it's too often, I think. Like there's rarely like I think praise from parents is often pretty um pretty true but uh, sometimes people praise you but they're still like they're jealous or um you know you want to feel better about yourself um to like 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 show everyone see i'm praiseworthy you know that that kind of stuff that's the thing but like if you are praised in the end for your life wouldn't that be beautiful wouldn't that be beautiful because it would also mean that the choices you made that you might have hated yourself for, someone will say, it was okay. You did the best. You know, that's also something I, I associate with this here. 
Very nicely done, yeah. But I, man, if Haita is in the end an aureole and we have an aureole and it's the afterlife there, she finds him and he praises her, I will break, man. I will break, I can guarantee you. I will break an aureole if, they, if that is a thing. I will break there anyway, so. I haven't done anything praiseworthy. Ah, uh, he probably sees that not because he can see it, but because he knows her as well, which is the theme. They knew her. Yeah, that's something praiseworthy. Oh, and Himmel does the same that Stark does with the children. Like, children are so important to talk to them, teach them all you can with best, like with the best thoughts in mind and try to make them achieve their potential like telling someone yeah you can do whatever you want is stupid because that's a lie it's a lie and it's sad that that's a lie it's one of the th saddest things in life i think that you cannot tell a child and not lie you can be what you want you can't but help the child re realize the potential that can that you can do i think if you pay attention if you get to know them again something we have here in this episode again with her friends knowing her and her friends could probably, like, if they were there, they could try to make her realize her potential as well, in a way. Perhaps that's what made her kill the Demon King in the end, if she did. Digressing from a... <laughs> I'm doing a tangent from a tangent. I'm just noticing anyway, so... Yeah, children are so important. I will probably argue with my wife about that. Like, because I would not tell my daughters you can be anything you want. But I will sit down with them and be like, what can you do? What do you love? What would make you happy and uh, uh, what is something you're good at or, or you want and how far could you realistically go and people might say that's shitty but um, there's this notion of telling people you can be what you want there are no borders in life that's such a lie it's a lie it's a lie I hate like not telling it I don't do it but I get why people do it but that it is a lie that fact that this is a lie Telling people you can real like you can be what you want. Telling people that is a lie, and I hate that fact, because that would be so nice. If people could be what they wanted to be, but it's not. It's reality, and uh, yeah. So, but I love uh, that they are like the children are a theme. It's might come up later again. It might just be a side thing, but I love that they teach the next generation already a bit of them, so they will carry them in the f into the future. And they might praise them as well, by the way, but yeah. Seriously, something useful to know in the future. Uh, why does he say that? Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's so cool. I think he knew that he would do it, like he would do it. Like not that he could do it, like not that the situation would arrive where he could take an orphan himself. But if he had the opportunity, he would immediately do it. I think that's what he's saying here. Because Himmel already has touched him here in a way. Yeah, because he understands her here already. So he will understand Himmel already. And he said he took Fernin because what Himmel was like, because he would have done. So... Even though that was after his death, but I think it didn't matter really. Oh, she smiles again. So many strange people serve the goddess. I also love that the goddess is something very positively beautiful. Like, religion can be written as corrupt so quickly, so easy to do it. And it's often done it. I get it. It's a very nuanced. Not necessarily, unfortunately, but sometimes like in... in uh, in last church of like I, I watched that last year that video it was brilliantly one of the best written things about religion ever i've i've experienced it was a very nuanced take of two people talking about religion one against one for it and the one against it was just bettering the one for it but in the end the other one in my mind won uh, or at least did not falter and it was an open question still i i think yeah it was an open question still but in stories religion is often depicted as purely corrupt or at this it's corrupt part which there is by the way there is a huge corrupt part in religious um structures and extremists of course 
so that's there i know but i i think that that it's not really it's just the the they 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 try to shine a light on the good side of religion here because most religions in part deal with life after death and being a good person like that's at the core of many of those and some fail at it and get corrupted but i like that so we might get i hope we get some religious assholes in the show though as well i like that as well i like those two things because something but I don't know if you'd know, but um, so why are stories interesting, at least to me? Um, so you have good and evil and like something wrong and right or some two things opposing each other, but like being like two sides of the same coin, like good side of religion, bad side of religion, good and evil. Um, I don't know. Uh, 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 s stuff like that. And you can, if you write a story, you can do it either way. You have two people represent these things, which is like a more basic story. So Haito would be representing the good of religion and Kraft as well. Someone could represent then the bad part, and I hope they will do that because that makes it complete. Or you can have it, which is more modern, like more recent take on stories. One person could have both of these, and they would like sometimes come out and battle with each other, like like an Attack on Titan, basically, I feel like. You have characters like that a lot in Attack on Titan. So... Anyway, I rambled and we will now continue. <laughs> I had someone else praise me, Haita. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, he technically did already. Yeah. Yeah, Haita praised her by giving her his orphan. By the way, I just realized that he didn't directly do it. He said, I will do it in Aureole. Yes, he did technically as well. Like, he, he gave Fern to her when he died. So, basically, he did praise her. Like, if I go to heaven, I will... Or No, I'm sorry. I, I, I confused it. He said, if you go to heaven, I will praise you. But he went to heaven and praised her, so to speak. So, it, he, he, she got something, like some front-up payment. <laughs> I'm dumb. I'm sorry. I, I, I confused that. Yeah, he's in heaven now. Oh, God, no. She will. Oh, yes, please, Kraft. Like, this dude, we will meet him again. I feel that. Like a monk as well. It's probably just elves have monks and uh, humans have priests and they're the same belief, I guess. Or a monk is more uh, living in solitude and priests are in a, like, in a religious structure. That's so cool that Kraft thanked him as well. Because we saw what he did for Kraft and Fern only very briefly. Like, he, he trained Kraft and he um, gave Fern some stuff to think about. And, but we mainly saw what he gave to Frieden. But they still say thank you. And like he had stuff with them as well. We just didn't see it, unfortunately. But yeah, what a cool dude. Yeah, he's giving them... Yeah, he gave them Kraft. He gave them physical strength, spiritual strength, and uh, yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> awesome. Oh, oh, it's a one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that was the that was that was uh, uh, the episode. Loved it. It was it was very wholesome and calm, and uh, a lot to think about again. Yeah, I, I love these so much. Yeah, it's just so awesome. So awesome. Love the flashback as well. And there were, again, so many little things here that were really beautifully done. Like the Heiter stuff. Heiter, man, what an, what an awesome character. I think he might be my favorite of the show, actually. Heiter might be my favorite. I don't know. I also look a bit like him. If I had different glasses, I don't know if i do this. If I'd take some gel and put it in my hair, perhaps one day I would cosplay him on the Animagic or something. I might do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was so cool. And the praising stuff as well. Who doesn't want to be praised? So much to think about here again. Um, so, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Let me uh, 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 hear your thoughts on what I said again. Um, would you tell your children that they could uh, achieve everything they want? Would you tell them that? Or did you tell them that and regret it? Or did you tell them that and don't regret it? Like, I would love to hear that as well. 
Or what do you think about that? Because I think notice that there are many people who would be like, yeah, no, no, you can do everything you want. World is free. There are no boundaries. And if there are, we have to rip them down. Like, you can't rip them down. I don't know. Um, anyway, I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Bye. Also, if you want to support my horror content, check out volume one of my horror series called Remnants of the Old Truth, which is available for free as an audiobook on Vidith 22s horror channel. Link is pinned in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and take care.